and welcome to the Guy, Sharon and Clint podcast. Actually, why aren't I in this? Why? Tell me why! And today is a very special day. It is the day that we play Mavericks. I'm, I'm such a bloody maverick that I just ate some pizza in the studio, even though you're not allowed to eat food in the studio. Oh! And I didn't even eat uh, the whole pizza. I left the crust. Oh! And then I got the crust, and I just, um, instead of putting them in a rubbish bin, I just stuffed them behind my computer. Well, you just need to stop being such a maverick, because I do not have enough gun sound effects for you, okay? You are just blowing holes left, right, and centre. We're going to hit the phones now as well, because it turns out that not only are we crazy mavericks, but you guys are crazy mavericks as well. Todd, how are you a maverick, Matt? Oh, well, a couple of years ago, I used to work for a company that um, would drive trucks. I yeah. drove a 12 and a half ton truck, yeah. two trailers on the back, on my automatic car license. Oh! <laughs> that's not just being a maverick, that's playing up dangerous and illegal. I, TJ? I thought he was going to say he did a oh, burnout. Hello. <laughs> TJ, how are you a maverick? Well, I just went to Z and put $40 petrol on my car, but I got two blockheads and still a one. Oh! <laughs> Loose as a goose. Michael, how are you a maverick, mate? I'm a maverick because um, every time that it starts raining and stuff like that, I don't chuck um, the window wipers on automatic. I do it by hand manually every time. <laughs> yeah, oh my God, I do that as well. It just makes the window wipers way more interesting, eh? Yeah, it just makes your day a bit better. <laughs> okay, Shares Dog, I'm going to ask you, because I, I thought Michael was a great maverick, okay. and I want to give him a prize. Right. But my prize that I'm supposed to give out is the Fault in Our Stars. Is that for guys too? Um, be for guys too. Michael, do you have a girlfriend? Yeah, I do. Oh, there do you we want go. To, do you enjoy making her cry? Because you oh, have one. Really. <laughs> you have won a DVD of The Fault in Our Stars. If you give it to her as a gift, I'm sure she'll really appreciate it. The oh, Fault in Our please, Stars is available now on Blu-ray and DVD. Here's a bonus. Here's a bonus. Michael, you're also going in the draw to win an overnight at the Novotel Queenstown to Town Lakeside Hotel, a relaxing experience at the Onsen Hot Pools, and a $300 Prezi card. Oh, sweet. That's how loose you are, bro. You're in the draw. You're a maverick. You don't take your girlfriend on romantic weekends. You try and win them on the radio. And also make a cry with fondness stars. How are you a maverick, Matt? Hey, guys. Hello. I'm such a maverick. My truck has 18 gears, but when it's about empty, I only use about 10 of them and don't even use the clutch. Oh! That's loose. That is... How does your car not stall if you're not using the clutch? Sorry, I think I just hung up on him. Oh, what a stink guy. Um, Jaden, <laughs> Jay, uh, Jaden, how are you a maverick? Yeah, I'm such a maverick because when I was younger, I used to do uh, the paper run, but it wasn't you know just the paper run. It was the property press. Yeah. I used to do like one street and then just dump the rest in the bush. Oh, the old classic <laughs> runaway paper boy. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. There's a fine line, what I've noticed from doing Mavericks for a couple of weeks, there's a fine line between like being a maverick and just being incompetent at your job. And I think he falls in the category of just being real crap at his job. No, he just couldn't be bothered. People that do those paper rounds, especially back in the day, it was like slave labor. You're like $25 a week and you had to be up at 5.30. Yeah, but you're a kid. That's good money for you when you're a kid. So? No way. I wish I had his job. I would have, I would have dropped them you off. Can, you can go do a pamphlet right? Imagine run the want. poor person, Mr. Property, who runs the property press. He'll be peeved off and not helping his business. Ryan, how are you a maverick, mate? Well, I was going to say before that I am actually uh, pretty maverick because I'm driving a dump truck and I've got no experience. But I actually thought of something that happened at Smoko that made me even more maverick. Oh, okay. tell us, tell you know us. That, you know that trick when, when someone like stirs their coffee and then they stick the teaspoon on the back of your hand and you freak out? Yes, Ryan, yes. Well, I could, I could see it coming. And I just held my hand there just before, and then my workmate just did it, and I just handled it. I got a, <laughs> I got a blister on the back of my hand, but the boys just felt so like that guy's got no pain receptacles there. They think I'm so hard. That is amazing. I, I was so impressed that I prematurely gunned. <laughs> Ryan, you are amazing. Thank you so much for your call, you hard guy. I okay, also, never calling someone a hard guy again. It's just dirty. Yeah, I, I, I like how I like how people are texting and calling themselves. I'm a mavy. Like they're so loose. They're such mavericks. They just don't even say maverick. Yeah, someone texted. I'm such a mavy that I joined Penguin Club and didn't even ask my parents' permission. What is Penguin Club? I don't know, but it sounds like it's obviously for like 12-year-olds. Or is it a club for people that have pet penguins? Oh, that'd and be only cool. the Tarleton family are in it. <laughs> 
I wish. Can I just say that, that you know people have a lot of dogs. A lot of people have cats as ping- pets. Yes. Not enough people have penguins as pets. Well, it's because not enough people live in Antarctica. Yeah, but you got a fridge. You can keep it in there. You can't keep the penguin in the fridge. You can You could maybe get a refrigerated room and put the. When I went to McDonald's, we had a whole room that was a fridge. We could put a penguin in there. I could eat the buns. Sometimes I. <laughs> I it's not the, the dumbest bun. idea. I've had some. Du- hey, no, just say, like, this is definitely this. one of your dumbest no, ideas. No, but it's not the dumbest idea I've ever had, though, because I've had dumber. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Yeah, that's remember true. that time when I invented the big stick that you stick out your car <laughs> to um, show people which way you're turning instead of indicators? <laughs> Guys, stick. Guys, stick. Yeah. We won't talk about that anymore because we've got a broadcasting um, stands complaint <laughs> for talking about Guys, stick. Guys, Sharon and Clint on the edge. So last night we had the TV3 new season launch. Speaking yes. of unprofessional. I was standing up the back with our boss, well, old boss Leon. Now he has been promoted and he's like one of the the big dogs. What a D-bag. And he um, was extremely unprofessional. He was like the naughty kid in the class that kept on laughing through the whole thing. When Mike McRoberts was on stage, he started doing Mike McRoberts impressions. And I was like, Leon, you're management now. You have to behave yourself. And he was like, shut up. I'm Mike McRoberts. I went <laughs> gone to Geyser. I was like, oh my God, this is so embarrassing. <laughs> And then that goes really quiet. Yeah. And he goes, oh, my God, I forgot to tell you. And I was like, oh, my God. He wrote, and he wrote, like, turned around to look at me. I was like, oh, God. And he goes, I didn't tell you about the dog. And I was like, oh, okay, because his dog's been really sick and had to get, like, all these operations and stuff. He's got, like, brain problems. And could barely, like, walk. And they were, like, really worried that, it, you know, it wasn't going to make it, stuff his like that. His dog has had more, like, medical treatment than most humans. It's real sad. And it could barely walk and stuff like that. And then they were, it was just starting to come right, but she wouldn't eat anything. Like, they couldn't get her to eat anything. And so she was just getting more, like, real skinny and stuff. I offered to um, kill his dog and throw it in the river. No, they, they, don't you even allowed. joke about that. That so, is, don't. Don't. Sorry. I told you off for saying. I, I went don't too far, there. and I apologize. So anyway, back to the story. They were uh, down like uh, in the Coromandel where they like go with their batch and stuff. And one of his sons gave the dog a little bit of like a frankfurter sausage, <laughs> and the dog just lost its absolute mind. And so they've now been feeding it every day a frankfurter sausage. <laughs> I heard there's dogs in those things. He could be eating other dogs. Well, the dog is loving it. And I said to me, he goes, you won't believe it. The dog's been having a six inch hot dog every day. And she's pretty much back to normal. The hot dogs have saved my dog's <laughs> life. And he is actually convinced that hot dogs have saved his dog. Well, they've saved them uh, for at least another six months until it dies of like don't you say cholesterol that. or something. That, no, don't say that. But now his like his real thing that he's worried about is he's got to go to the vet, and the vet's going to be like, "Ma'am, the dog's looking amazing. What have you been doing?" He's going to be like feeding it a hot dog every day. <laughs> it's not you, ideal. You heard it here first on the Guy Shannon and Clint show. If you want to make your dog better, try feeding it hot dogs. <laughs> Ludicrous. It's, it's pretty good though. It's pretty good. Guy, Sharon and Clint on the urge. Ladies and gentlemen, in studio right now, put your headphones on guys and strap in. We have the new X Factor judges. It's Natalia Kills and Willie Moe. that is. Welcome to the show guys. It's very, very exciting to see that you're going to be on X Factor New Zealand. Thank you so much. We're so happy to be here. Wait, how were you feeling yesterday? Because you must have been pretty jet lagged coming all the way from the UK. I feel like I've got a choice right now to either blow my brains out or stab myself <laughs> in the head. And I'm teetering on the edge of, of both. Both, yeah. Well, it's lucky though that you guys are married. So that means that like, if you start getting grumpy, you've got someone to take out your jet lag on. Oh, my hands hurt. Or I've somebody been doing loads to of massages. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> N- Natalia Kills and Willie Moon. I cannot believe that you guys are married. That is amazing. And my first question is, and you must get this all the time, is what uh, last name uh, do you take, or how does that work, or does it not? Is it Natalia Moon or Willie that is Kills? A very good, Willie Kills. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> uh, no, that's a very good question. Uh, actually, we just spent the last week in London. She was renewing her passport, and she took my last name, uh, which is Sinclair, and also changed her first name, didn't you? Yeah, to the nickname Willie gave me when we first had a a liaison. Oh, mate, so, so, okay, okay, okay. Okay, so you legally changed your name. Yeah. Yeah. What to, did you change it to? Well, obviously it's Mrs. Uh, Mrs. Sinclair now. Yeah. That's, well, congratulations, yeah. Oh, that's beautiful. Or Mrs. Moon. To, yeah. Oh. yeah. To everyone else. Um, he his nickname for me. Do you want to tell him? Yeah, Teddy. 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 Yeah. So she's Teddy Sinclair. And why that's is that? Adorable. Because she's small, brown, and cuddly. Oh. <laughs> 
You guys are so romantic. <laughs> I've been thinking about this like way too much because I, I, we really got into X Factor New Zealand last year. When it comes to the judging panel, are they? Because you guys on stage last night, very cuddly. Are they going to sit you next to each other, or are we going to have to separate you so you keep your hands off each other? That's a very good question. I believe they're going to sit you underneath the table. <laughs> and really? Yeah. And your um, head will be poking out of the roof because you're so tall. That is very inappropriate. <laughs> I, I, I was actually going to because my first test um, for you guys as X Factor judges yeah. was going to be: Do you have a personality? And obviously, you guys have it. Yes, in I hope so. So I'm. <laughs> So I'm so pumped for X Factor already. I'm gonna ask you, have you seen any of New Zealand X Factor before? Yes. We spent many a sobering night uh, <laughs> <laughs> watching footage, watching, watching YouTube clips. Oh, YouTube oh clips. god! Yeah. And when you say sobering, you do say it because the talent's bad. No, I mean that. You know, it's just one of those things where if you plan a very um, seductive, intimate night in with your husband <laughs> and your brand new newlyweds, the yep. best thing you could do. Uh, for your intimate life is not <laughs> to watch New Zealand X Factor. It's true. It's true. I'll tell Good you, call. my husband and I, we 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 went through dry style when X Factor was on as well because I was just really into it. That's so good. It's really good. Okay, it's, you've got to uh, you've got to enjoy it though when you come because uh, you are gonna be so sick of certain songs. Like I'm gonna put money on it now. The most sung song in auditions will be "Stay with Me" by Sam Smith. Naturally, yeah, yeah. yeah it's gonna be everywhere. We are live with uh, recently married, recently named X Factor judges, and all round off the hook dudes, <laughs> Willie Moon and Natalia Kills. <laughs> hey! Hello. Hello. Hello, now, darlings. Natalia, you're pretty much going to be adopted Kiwi now. Yeah. Is that exciting for you? It's very exciting. Uh, I need to, like, kind of explore. I, I came here last year, and I've literally only seen the inside of all these, like, uh, studios. studios. Do, you like, do you like trees? Because <laughs> there's a shitload of those. <laughs> yeah, let's, I mean, I'm not number one tree hugger, um, but I write on the paper that comes from trees. <laughs> So. I heard I was I was um, I was I was reading an interview that said you uh, wrote uh, with and for Madonna. Yes, and I used paper from trees. <laughs> <laughs> that is awesome. That must be terrifying though, writing for Madonna. You know what? Um, it was terrifying. I had the fabulous. Um, Willie Moon to help me. So oh, you get, both did it. Well, yeah, yeah it was um, it was yeah. really good. I like we have a studio in our home in New what? York. Yeah, and then we'd like come home at like one in the morning, like like trembling. Shaking. I, oh my god, I've got to write another song for tomorrow. Yeah, I've got to write four, four more songs. Four o'clock in the morning. Yeah, and, like, knocking something out. <laughs> that is crazy. And because Willie, you're from New Zealand. Yeah, I'm from Wellington. So is this Natalia? Is this one of your like big trips home? Like, because your family all still here? No. Oh, I was yeah. going to say you're home to like suck up to. The family while you're here as well so you kill two birds with one stone would I be wearing a skirt this short if I was meeting his <laughs> friend this afternoon well, I, th- I think <laughs> you I think that you probably would yes I, 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 I you got me touche Natalia I've got a crazy question for you but first we've got to go to the phone lines and see what uh, the people of New Zealand have to ask uh, Gabriel you've got a question yes I do what's your question um, does the really mean makeup does Willie Moon wear makeup? You can hardly hear it. Does it sometimes? Yeah. He uh, wears my lipstick when he kisses me uh, <laughs> at Aww. inappropriate moments. At especially at night in my hotel room when nobody's there, I happen to you know, be a big fan of wearing a wig and makeup. <laughs> Why not? Why Beth, not? What is your question? Are there going to be any mini moons running around in the near future? Oh, mini moon. <laughs> Anyways, try not to pash on air, okay, guys? <laughs> if we can find the right surrogate, if you want to be the surrogate, absolutely. Yeah. Oh, yeah, totally. Oh, how, I'm only 14, but anyway. No, no, not you, not you! Yeah. No 14-year-old we'll year surrogates, no 14-year-olds. What the not hell? Not a good career <laughs> choice. Fast forward. <laughs> um, uh, and then we've got Natalia asking a question, or is it a question for Natalia? Natalia, what's up? Um, I was wondering if Natalia is going to be wearing her fluffy shoes. Oh! Oh, that's a fabulous question. I will be fabulously wearing my fabulous fluffy slippers. And I love you to death. Not only because I believe we have the same name, but that you uh, are obsessing over my footwear as much as I am. So that's great. <laughs>
I think we're besties. Oh, <laughs> that's Aww. awesome. It'll be quite, that's the thing that's going to be great about this show, I think, as well, is that the fashion that you guys are going to wear as well is going to be is going to be awesome. And then we'll have all the acts and stuff as well. Okay. I'm excited. Now you can ask your offensive question. Well, it's, it's not offensive, but it's just like one of those things. You read shit on the internet and you don't know if it's real or not. Natalia Kills, I've got to ask you this. Okay. It, I read on the internet that at 15, you ran away from home yes. to Paris, yes. joined a cult. Guilty. And tried to... This is all real? Yeah. And tried to burn down a house. I'm going to plead the fifth on that one for the benefit <laughs> oh. of not losing my position on X Factor for wow. fear of, like, arson, <laughs> endangering the contestants' life. Yeah, it's always best not to admit to your crimes live Are on you trying radio. to get me deported? What's happening? I just got here. So yeah. there's, there's the people that are going to end up, like, you looking after them on X Factor. Now they know that if they don't do a good performance and stay in, then you might burn down their hotel room. Let's go with that. <laughs> I'm, I would like, yeah, I would like to like just advertise that right now. That's really good. Like, just anyone I get in my category, you've got to try as hard as you <laughs> as you can not to be completely dreadful. Otherwise, yeah. Natalia Kills is burning down your hotel room. I mean, it's kills for a reason, guys. <laughs> Well, Literally, before. that's the most mind. I can't believe that's real. That's the most mind blowing thing I've ever heard. Thank you for being so honest and open about that. It's awesome. Before you guys go, we're going to ask you two X Factor New Zealand questions that you've probably probably been asked all day. First question: What category do you guys hope to get? And second question: What are you looking for in the auditions? I want bands. You want bands as your category? Definitely. And what about you, Natalia? Um, You're creating so much anticipation. I, I know. Do you um, want the oldies? Do you want the girls? Do you want the boys? I think I'd be better spent on the girls. I think, like, for me, the X Factor is about being magnetic and about, um, you know, turning heads as well as doing a good performance and being yeah. a great musician. And I think that with the girls, it would be really easy for me to put a lot of the style input mm. in, a lot of the body language, a lot of the things that are, you need to make an excellent stage performance to take it away from being karaoke, mm. um, drunk on a Friday night, and actually <laughs> into something that then, you know, is a, a representation of the talent out there that New Zealand has to offer. Awesome. And what are you guys going to look for in the auditions? Just something transcendent. Somebody who draws you into whatever they're doing and makes you connect to it and makes it so you can't look away. That's it. Okay. And you're going to be looking for the same thing? Um, I'm going to be looking for anyone who... um, doesn't do that really annoying thing that people do where they think that the louder they sing and the yes. more aggressive That's they what sing. I do. Oh, oh. <laughs> yes. Like I'm looking for people to not do that to me. Yeah. I, I calling all New Zealanders Be have warm. mercy on my ears. <laughs> please. I need them. <laughs> Natalia Kills and Willie Moon, you guys are so awesome. I am super stoked, especially now that I've met you, that you guys are going to be expected judges this year. I cannot wait. Thank you so much for coming to the studio. Thank you. Thank you. Guy Sharon and Clint. On the edge. And I was at a friend's house the other night, Guy. Yeah. And it was so weird because I was on the street and my husband was, like, dropping me off. And I was like, oh, do you know there used to be a brothel on the street? And he was like, no way, which house was it? And I was like, it's one of these houses. And I couldn't figure it out. So I get out of the car and go into this house. And then I said to the girl whose house it was, I was like, oh, which one? Which house down here was the was the brothel? Is it still a brothel? And she goes, it's this house. What? And I was like, how long has it not been a brothel for? And she was like, oh, like three years or something. But they still <laughs> we still get people knocking on the door oh! sometimes. And at night, some people will knock on the door and they get really confused because it used to be um like a... It was it was all Asian girls that worked there. And she was like, you won't believe it because we had to ask our landlord because we couldn't figure out why there were drains in every room and that the wardrobe the wardrobes had bathroom tiles. And then where you put the bed in each room, there was this weird button. And so then they found out it used to be this brothel and the tiles was where there used to be a shower in each bedroom and the buttons were panic buttons that the girls would use if they got into a bit of trouble. Jesus Christ. It was so crazy. And so we were like walking around, like finding all these things. And it was so fascinating, but so weird at the same time. And okay. she, she just could not believe that the house that she lived in used to be a brothel. You conveniently um, scrubbed over one point there. 
why the floor has a... I shouldn't even ask. Why does the floor in a brothel have a drain? What are they washing away? This is the grossest because thing. Because they have... The, <sighs> the, the, each room has a shower. <sighs> so if, like, oh, say oh. a businessman oh. came in at lunchtime and he got sweaty, then he can have a shower afterwards. Oh, I thought and they were washing was, away all the juices or something. Oh! That's what, well, that's the obvious thing. That's the obvious thing. That was the obvious. Don't look at me like I'm a weirdo. Stop You're it. the one who was Stop living it. in a brothel Stop house, it. mate. Stop it. Stop it. So we want to know this afternoon. I'll wait 100 the edge or text us at 3343. I'm going to be surprised if anybody even rings in for this. But what did your house used to be? Yeah. Was it was it also a brothel? Did it have something weird about or it? Or it could be a positive thing. Did you do you live in a lighthouse like the people on that um, show that I used to watch from Australia? Did you used to live in Dan Carter's house? Doesn't matter. Let us know. Ashley, uh, where where did your house used to be? Um, so was it actually my house? I went down to Christchurch to see a friend. Yeah. And um, I stayed there for a few days and stuff. And then I was like, oh, so what is this place actually? Because what it was was a big flat land with a whole bunch of houses on it, a big hall and stuff. Yeah. And then when I asked, they were like, oh, it's actually an old mental hospital. <laughs> Whoa! Oh, that would freak me out. I would not have been able to stay there any The longer. scariest place I've ever seen in my life is Kingsgate Hos- Hospital where Spookers is. That was available for tra- Trade Me. Uh, and it was like there to rent on Trade Me, and they were like forty eight bedrooms, thirty seven bathrooms, and two uh, car parks. Two car parks, though. That would freak me out. You wouldn't be able to have very many visitors. Megan, what is uh, Megan? What is your uh, what did your house, house used to be? Um, it's my parents' house. It used to be a church. Wow, that's what your office for John and Ben used to be. So a they church, isn't so it? they live in a place of worship. I suppose. I bet your mum and dad are doing some sinning in that house. No. no. Um, yes, I'd expect so. No, okay. Oh, yeah. Wait, stop, don't think about your mother and dad. No, that's gross. Well, how, was, how do you think you got here? Embrace it, babes. Julia, what did your house used to be? Our house used to be a drug house. What? So what did they have to do? Did, did you have to get Winner. it? Um, did you have to Winner. get it like cleaned and stuff like that in case they were making pee in there? Or like no, no, it was just a house that used to sell drugs from it. We had many strange visitors at many strange hours of the night. Wow, that is insane! Yeah. Hey, Julia, I am so sorry that you had to go through go through that. We'll send her. We'll send her saying, Chang, send her saying from the Edge Prize cupboard. Oh, she deserves right. it. She lives in a drug house. That's insane. That, I, w- I wouldn't even be able to do that. Guy, Sharon and Clint. On the edge. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the studio the best goddamn band ever to come out of Nelson. It's Caleb and Georgia from Bruce. <laughs> Who Venice? Welcome into the studio, guys. <laughs> <laughs> that was so planned. <laughs> it's what we do. One of the reasons uh, we got you in here today is because we would love you to do the Guy, Sharon and Clint yet to be titled cover challenge. Well. We've thrown you in the deep end. <laughs> about that. You guys are very nervous. It's actually no joke because we kind of do get really nervous. Okay. Oh, <laughs> sweet. Don't, don't, don't be like that. Don't be like that. It's a welcoming Nelson style environment. <laughs> I should get a, a chick with a, some fire poise here to make it more Nelson styles. Everything is I've just... I've never seen a fire chick with poi poise. In Nelson? No. You obviously haven't been to Tahunanui Beach enough, mate, because that's going off 24-7. Oh, the... <laughs> I've Nishman, never mate. seen that there either. 24-7. Um, at, the, at, the ro- at the roller skating rink, mate, you got to get the fire poise out. Um, no, I've got to... Uh, I think you're actually... Ma- you are making shit up. <laughs> I've got to throw you guys I, I in the... I think he is. I've, yeah. got to, <laughs> I've got to throw you guys in the deep end. Well, what are like characteristic things about Richmond? When you guys think of home, what do you think of? Like, South mullets. Street Gallery. Is a that mall? there? A mall. <laughs> See, we don't go to um, Tahuna, no. we go to Rabbit Island. <laughs> yeah, that's where it's at. Yeah, I hate things that are called like Rabbit Island, so I bet it's not covered in rabbits that live there. Like, it's not a disappointing rabbits? lack of rabbits. It's yeah. not even the shape of a rabbit. Yeah, it's, 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 that it's like something? Goat Island. No goats on Goat Island. One of the special Stupid things name. One of the special things about um, Rabbit Island is that if you walk down far enough, you venture into the Mapua Leisure Park. <laughs> yeah. And that's where you see naked dudes. Well, if... It, if <laughs> Yeah. You know, buddy. <laughs> Just me. I'm the only one who's walked down that far. Okay, sweet yeah. ass. Well, anyway, we'll, we'll get instead of doing Nelson tourism, let's get back to the cover <laughs> challenge. Now, with the cover challenge, sell our home. <laughs> I know. Hey, do you know what? I've spent all year trying to get some. I thought profit. that's why we were here. 
I'm telling you, my uncle's made no extra money from me talking about his pottery shop in Nelson all year, so I don't know if this is going to help. What's his pottery shop? South Street Gallery. It's on South Street. Don't ask about the effing pottery shop. Honestly, go in there. I think I know that. We we know another person that um, we're actually friends with other people that used to own a pottery. Uh Uh-oh. We're we're good friends with the competition. This is a South Street Gallery (laughs) only show, and if you go in there, tell him I sent you, he'll give you two bucks off. He will not do that. He won't do do it for you, but do it for these guys. So you guys, you guys have been thrown in the deep end with the guy Sharon Clint yet to be covered, uh, titled C- Cover Challenge. Um, and no pressure here. The last week, the band who did it, um, the drummer played a, a pump bottle. So you can't be any worse than that. With some keys. What, um, what would you like to attempt today? Um, do we have, um, a, do we have the guitar? Do we yeah, it's over come? there. Yeah. Otherwise it's, you're gonna play it's guitar outside the studio. Oh, okay. When um, you get a guitar? Hey. After this, <laughs> broods are going to get a guitar and they're going to blow us our, blow our minds with what song? Um, um, Katy Perry. Oh, wow! Ooh, what Katy Perry song? All of them. Nah, just Dark Horse. <laughs> montage, quite excited. What are you playing? Dark Horse. Dark Horse, wow. oh, yes! Awesome. This is so exciting. We'll be back with Broods playing Katy Perry Dark Horse. Yes! It's going to blow my mind. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for the Guy Sharon and Clint cover challenge. Introducing. Hang on, did you just title it? You just titled it the Guy Sharon and Clint cover challenge. No, I didn't title it. No, you it titled just then. it. We've got a title. Introducing yes. the band that won the best new faces at the Richmond Mall talent competition in <laughs> 2008, performing Katy Perry's Dark Horse. It's Broods! Choose carefully Cause I, I I'm capable of anything Of anything And everything Make me a Aphrodite Make me a one And only But don't Make me your enemy Your enemy Your enemy So you wanna play with magic Boy, you should know what you're falling for Baby, do you dare to do this? Cause I'm coming at you like a dark horse Are you ready? Like a bird, like a bird without a cage But down to earth, if you choose to walk away Don't walk away, it's in the palm of your head now, baby It's a yes or a no, no, maybe Before you give it up to me Give it all to me So you wanna play with magic Boy, you should know what you're falling for Baby, do you dare to do this? Cause I'm coming at you like a dark horse Oh, are you ready for, ready for The perfect song, perfect storm Cause once you're
Boy, you should know what you're falling for. Baby, do you dare to do this? 'Cause I'm coming at you like a dark horse. Are you ready for? Ready for、oh, the perfect storm? Perfect storm. 'Cause once you're mine, once you're mine. Sharon and Clint on the edge. You with Guy Sharon and Clint? Just actually Clint and Sharon today because no, sorry, Guy and Sharon today because Clint has taken a few listeners with him over to Puerto Rico to go to the Bacardi Triangle where Ali Goulding, Kendrick Lamar, and Calvin Harris will all be playing. Only eighteen hundred people are going to be on this island, and they're going to have the time of their lives thanks to Bacardi. Okay, that's pretty exciting. Do you know what's more exciting? John and Ben at ten tonight. TV three. Can I plug that? Well, not right now. Why not? Because we're about to find out what Clint's up to in Puerto Rico. Gosh! Kia ora, New Zealand. This is Clint reporting live from the Bermuda Triangle, currently in Puerto Rico, with、uh, three winners. Please state your name and your mother's name, so she knows you're still alive. I'm Johnny. Karen. I'm alive and well. I'm Harriet. Hi, Mum. Annie. Michael. Hello, Rita. And hello to Michael's mum, Rita, from Clint as well.、Um, currently, we're sat inside our hotel room. It's night one of the、um, Bacardi Triangle. We're on the brink of the Bermuda Triangle. Has anyone seen the Bermuda Triangle yet? No, I've seen it. We're, we're in it. We're in. We're, we're in it. Yeah, we're we're, we're in. We're Are we going to make it out? I can't tell you that just yet, Clint. I'm not sure. Half of our、um, half of our bodies is invisible at the moment because part of it's in the Bermuda Triangle, but that's kind of how life goes. We're going to make it out. You're not going to make it out, Clint. I'm going to make it out. <laughs> Everybody thinks I'm going to die in the Bermuda Triangle, but I am going to make it out of the Bermuda Triangle as well. Clint's a sacrificial human. <laughs> <laughs> If something goes wrong, we know we're sacrificed. I'm not being sacrificed for this. I'm not being sacrificed for a free trip to Puerto Rico, but we're in Puerto. Rico, and tonight we're going to a pool party. What are we doing tomorrow night? Halloween. What Halloween costumes have we got ready to go?、Uh, I saw some teeth rummaging around in my, in my、uh, toiletry bag, but other than that, yeah, yeah we're gonna wear the worst、um, Halloween costumes of all time. We're just gonna put some fangs and some fake blood on and be like, <laughs> not fake. I, I, It's gonna be real. I think we're gonna cut each other. Clint's blood. <laughs> we're, we're from New Zealand, and we don't know about Halloween. But we're gonna do that. And then on Saturday night, we're gonna see Ali Golding and Calvin Harris and Kendrick Lamar、um, live. And other than that, you know, just. Having a real good time,、um, spacing out, drinking responsibly, going water, drink, water, drink, right? Yeah, one for one. One for one's our motto.、Mm, absolutely. So, from the Bermuda Triangle, inside the Bacardi Triangle,、uh, this is Clint. Over and out. Kakiti ano. What Clint's up to, and if you follow him on Snapchat and Instagram, you'll see all his photos. Looks awful. Kira Clint's worst Twitter name of all time. Follow him on that. Yeah, go and have a wee geese. Kira got- Clint, what a loser. Guy Sharon and Clint on the bloody edge. Oh, 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 oh. I wanna love you like a fancy cat. <laughs> Like a big fancy cat with long hair. There's a fancy cat and he's got big ears and he loves it when you scratch under his chin. Watch out, the fancy cat just signed an endorsement deal <laughs> with Fancy Feast. It's not that good for cats, but it, they love it. It's like crack for cats. Oh, my cat loves crack. My cat loves crack, and what the crack is <laughs> is a little nip, and it likes to lap up the mouth. We recently had like a professional like radio guy come over from Australia, and he like judged our radio show, and he was like, "I hate it when you guys improvise songs. We should save the Fancy Cat song and email it to him right now. He's gonna love it." Guy and I were to be working on a song in our spare time, and that was it. it took us three years to write that song. <laughs> you heard it here first, guys. Sharon and Clint.
itch. Time for Sharonisms of the Week. Say what? Sharonisms of the Week. You got what? Sharonisms of the Week. It's going to be good. Sharonisms of the Week. The best. These are the um the highlights, kind of lowlights of the things Sharon has said on and off air during the week. The things that have really, you know, she says a lot of good things, Sharon, but she also says a lot of crap that I'm like, I've got to write that down and embarrass her with them at the end of the week. Well, I feel like you do this for you on a daily basis anyway, but I am quite interested with the evidence that you uh, may be bringing to the table this afternoon. Sharon was watching um, Sharon was watching uh, YouTube earlier in the week and a Jenny Craig pre-roll came out. <laughs> and uh, Sharon just shouted out, shut up, Jenny Craig, you offensive bitch. <laughs> Is is Jenny Craig is Jenny Craig someone who you find particularly annoying? No, is I I've done Jenny Craig before. Yeah, and uh, I just saw it and it just made me feel bad about the fact that I was eating a cake of chocolate at the time. <laughs> okay, so this next one I don't know. Are we allowed to say the V word is in the woman genitalia on here? Just say V. Oh, I feel like I've got to say it to get the Okay, all right. Go across. on then. Go on then. Okay, so I can't even remember the context of this, so I can't even explain it. I- but Sharon said, I, the, oh, these are quotes, by the way. I do not screw with them. I do not edit them. She said, if you were a chick, I could fit my head inside your vagina. <laughs> I honestly think I could. I've got a massive head. Yeah, I reckon that we could play if you if you had ladies. If I was bits, a woman. Yeah, I reckon that we could play childbirth and I could crawl <laughs> right up inside there and then just like slide out. It would be a real good Halloween gag. We would go to a Halloween party and you'd be like, "Oh, my water's broken," and then I could just squirt a um, a pump bottle out of there and then I'd just slowly emerge like a beautiful butterfly. <laughs> okay. <laughs> And Sharon, who's fi- visualizing it? You, are, I can, I know you're visualizing it. Final um, Sharonism of the week. Uh, it was a threat that she did to Chang today when um, she uh, 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 Chang the butt t- toucher from the office was touching her butt. <laughs> he touched my butt six times today. That's sexual harassment in the workplace. Our office is quite small. There's a lot of people who work here, and uh, uh, it was just yelled literally in Chang's face. Don't come near me again. If you touch me again, I will flick you. In the dick. <laughs> flick you in the dick. Flick you in the... She yelled it over and again. over again like an ADD child. Oh, I hope no. you're happy and I hope you're embarrassed by everything you say, the only, the only thing about Sheridan's of the week is that people don't people then realise that I am quite gross. That was Sharonisms of the Week. That was great. Sharonisms of the Week. Probably going to complain. Sharonisms of the Week. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for listening. Well, we haven't finished. We've still got the rest of the show to go. Oh, I feel like we peaked there. Let's, no. just, let's just go home now. <laughs> Today's Guy, Sharon and Clint podcast is brought to you by Grass. Perfect for gardens and sport. Get Grass today from your friendly Grass vendor.